Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Daniel Zenis. I'm a data engineer at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab and part of the core development team at Sabir. I will be talking today about our analytics platform for Connex Comics, which we have coined Sabir as in scalable analytics for brain exploration research. Eric Johnson is our technical lead for this project and will also be joining me for a Q&A session. So at its core, Sabir is a cloud-based workflow execution engine and tool library. It's primarily developed for neuroscience and machine learning applications, but has the ability to generalize depending on the use case. The project was funded through the NIH Brain Initiative, and essentially the goal was to create a system where a neuroscientist who doesn't have the experience in high performance computing or cloud services can run scalable, reproducible, and analytical pipelines on their data. So bare workflows are focused on electron microscopy and x-ray data, as these are most common modalities seen in um, connectomic data sets. And one of the unique things about Sabera is that there's an emphasis on community collaboration. So we support the block and object storage system coined uh, Boss DB, which is an open source cloud-based data store where collaborators can upload their data and easily share it through their browser or through a programmatic API. So I've been mentioning this word um, connectomes. So what a connectome is, is essentially a connectivity map of the brain. Um, using the ultra-fine resolution of electron microscopy, we're able to identify individual neurons and synapses and develop um, graphical models of the neuron connections. So why do this in the first place? Well, there are two major reasons. The first is that we hypothesize that understanding this connectivity information can result in um, novel computer architecture and more biophidelic neural stimulation. The second reason is that through this data, we gain a better understanding of connectivity implications of uh, neurodegenerative diseases and psychological disorders. So here we look at uh, three different scales of data. Moving from left to right, we have uh, data covering six orders of magnitude from the macro scale, which is in the millimeter range, to the nano scale, which is in the nanometer range. It's worth noting how one cubic millimeter of MRI data is just one byte, in, um, but in electron microscopy, the same cubic millimeter would require two petabytes to store. And then uh, one of the major sources of this data for connectomics comes from the Microns program, which uh, successfully imaged one cubic millimeter of mouse cortex in electron microscopy. And the general process involves uh, recording functional data from a subject mouse. And then um, after sacrificing the mouse, its brain tissue is collected and sliced up into 40 nanometer thick slices, which is an image through a specialized uh, electron microscope. The data goes through some uh, uh, pre-processing and then stored as structural data on BOSDB. Um, with this structural data, we can segment or essentially carve out uh, the individual neurons through an automated computer vision algorithm aided by human annotators. And we create these morphological um, constructions of the neuron. We then identified the connections through the synapses with other neurons and gained that connectivity information we're interested in. So ultimately, the goal of the program is to better understand the relationship between the structure and function of the brain. Um, from this data, we, want, we hope to discover biological motifs, which are these repeated fundamental structures, which can be used to compare contactomes um, across individuals and even across species to further our understanding of the brain. So yeah, that was basically the high level motivations and goals in creating Saber. Now I'll be shifting more to how we design Saber and some examples of how it's used. So to reiterate from earlier, Saber is an open source uh, cloud-based workflow execution engine and tool library. It allows a user to deploy complex workflows on petabytes of data uh, leveraging cloud infrastructure. We have some additional advanced features like hyperparameter search and optimization for machine learning pipelines. And how it works is a typical user would create a CWL file, which essentially defines the inputs and parameters and steps of a workflow. The, CW, the CWL would be sent through our CWL parser, which is all containerized with a do, within a Docker system. So basically any machine that can install Docker can therefore install Severe. Once the CWL is read, into the system, we use Apache Airflow, which is a workflow scheduling software to create a job definition and then send it off to the cloud or alternatively, it could be run by the uh, run locally by the user. 
Once a job definition is received by AWS Batch, our managed services um, take care of the rest. So eventually it will automatically create a virtual instance, load the workflow and then uh, all the required input files and then run it on the preset conditions such as a GPU enabled or memory specifications from the CWL. Finally, we allow users to upload the output files either on S3, which is a cloud um, file system uh, locally on the computer, or they can even upload it to Boss DB, which is our block, and block object storage system. So here's an example of one of the workflows we might run on electron microscopy data. Uh, the purpose of this workflow is starting from uh, electron microscopy images, we wanna get the graph representation of the neurons. So it would first start by extracting a subvolume of that data and then detecting biological features like synapses and membranes through our computer vision algorithms. We then use the outputs of these tools to completely segment all the neurons. And then after some post-processing merge step, we can extract the graph. Uh, another note is that all these tools are dockerized so, and standardized as well. So we can easily switch implementations or algorithms through some simple edits in the CWL file. Um, so here's an example tool for cell detection. We use this tool on X-ray microtomography data to gain insight on cell count and density. And this is a command line tool that leverages the Docker requirement hint to pull the latest image from our repository and ensure the user provides the required uh, hyperparameters. Uh, one of the things I like about CWL itself is that the, the file provides um, a standard interface for future cell detection tools and it ensures uh, compatibility with just existing workflows in general. So looking at a workflow itself now, we have the X-ray unit cell detection workflow <clears throat> with the steps shown on the right. And essentially what this does is download X-ray microtomography data and then train a, train a unit computer vision model to detect the cells. Uh, the output is a binary mask of detected cells in the data as well as performance metrics such as like accuracy and um, recall. These uh, the dependencies of each step are used to construct the DAG, which is the directed acyclic graph. And that's what uh, Apache Airflow uses to coordinate the orders of how the steps are executed. Um, we also allow users to provide a score format hit in each step for any metrics they wanna capture in the tool output, such as accuracy or precision. So a user would primarily interact with their CWL parser through a command line interface when running jobs. Uh, our CWL parser was written in Python and adds some additional features on top of existing CWL projects, such as like resource aware flags and parameter sweeps. So um, what parameter sweeps do is they allow a user to create an additional YAML file that specifies a range of parameters to run. And this is especially useful for like exploring a parameter space of a machine learning algorithm or downloading various subsections of data. And as I mentioned before, the parser supports standard output flags that capture uh, metric values or anything in the standard output. So we also have some extensions on top of the base CWL configuration to allow users to specify some severe specific hints. There's um, local execution, which is to a tool level hint to run that tool locally instead of using AWS compute resources. There's also local storage, which is a workflow level hint to store the outputs in either your local computer or use um, AWS S3 to store the outputs. Um, we also have some hints uh, for resource usage. So you can specify whether you wanna use a, a GPU or a number of, of, of CPUs. Uh, currently to use GPUs though, you have to put in, um, uh, change the default Docker runtime, which is kind of cumbersome. And we're hoping to make that a little bit more flexible with a workflow manager in the future. Um, one thing of note is that an increase to increase accessibility, we um, also created this analytics portal where users can submit jobs and then launch jobs through a web app. And these jobs are configured essentially through a simple web form. And what's happening in the background is that it's creating a CWL for that job and then sending it to Saber to execute. So uh, looking forward, we have some significant challenges for Saber. Uh, one thing is uh, improving uh, performance of machine learning models between data sets. And we are also looking into complete integration with our um, uh, data store ecosystem, BossDB. Um, we also need to improve our resources and documentation to deploy to new laboratories and for new users. And we're aiming to um, add 
uh, more backends than just uh, AWS and local execution. We're looking at like Kubernetes executors, so you can um, deploy your workflows on several managed services, and not, or, and you're not limited to just AWS. Um, we're trying to expand to different imaging domains. So we have light microscopy and functional and functional imaging. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're primarily focused on just uh, electron microscopy and X-ray. So we definitely want to eventually expand to other domains. And in terms of our CWL parser, we want to um, extend our current implementation, our current implementation, to have a user-friendly validator and visualizer, so users have an easier time constructing workflows. We also want to integrate with our workflow managers for easier logging and monitoring of jobs. So that about wraps it up. Um, please feel free to reach out to me or Eric with any questions you have. And you can visit our code repository on GitHub linked here if you, have, um, if you want to take a look. Um, thank, you, thank you for listening and please enjoy the rest of the mini conference.